Okay, let's call this thing to order. <laughs> um, so, do we have public joining us today? Yeah. Rushing back, back from their eclipse. Okay. Yes. Hi, Margaret. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Calling in from the road. Where are you? Uh, Norwich Walk. Can you hear me? Yes. We're yeah. very happy to see. You. Um, so we're missing Andy, which was expected, and Rick, who, who I'm sure is Eclipse Chase, and Angela so far. And we'll see. Turns up. Okay, so no members of the public at the moment. Um into agenda review and is there anything to add or change on the agenda? The only thing I'd like to do is on um, Roman numeral four to move that fourth bullet up to the to number one. So initial preparation for the May second select board meeting before Joe has thirty, and I think that will give us time to jump into that. So March 11th minutes, any comments, corrections? Hearing none, that all, all are approving those minutes. Yes. Thank you, Robin, for those. Yes, you're welcome. Yeah, well, well written. Good job. Excellent, we appreciate that good work. Um, so in, um, we have our usual workshop on the 16th of this month. So everybody's got the select board workshop on the 2nd of May, 6.30, the select board's always at 6.30, and it will either be a very, will come up soon, or it will be us as the, the agenda. Um, and in terms of the, the CPIC workshop, I'm just assuming that we'll do we'll do some of our work in private, <laughs> and then we'll come back and review our on the yeah on the 16th for the second. We move on. All right. Uh, so that takes us to recode update. And let's jump right in. Um, so I did an outline, and I think there are seven sections, not at all meant to be of equal weight. It's just the way it sort of flowed out. And some of them, um, a few folks have weighed in with comments. Someone, I think it was Joe, put approval by the select by the at the very end, which was, you know, let's have that creation here. Um, but in terms of, I would love to hear people's thoughts because I'm gonna just assume that everyone has kind of had a think about how this is gonna go. When we got together last workshop, which was here in this room, we were looking at the red line at session about how this, how the select board workshop. My suggestion was that, you know, it'd be more presenters than me, generally in agreement with that, but the question is how many? And, um, and I did the outline, and today is our first time to talk about it. So before we, maybe we'll actually do a screen share to, to look at it. Um, I'm open to hearing people's thoughts in terms of, um, you know, I'm thinking, it makes sense for me 
but not necessarily, you know? I mean, we can do anything we want. <laughs> and from folks, I mean, even my first experience of this new, there's interest, there's curiosity, and I'm, I'm anticipating it to be a very positive, um, you know, is there any, any thought thinking about how this is going to go? Um, and what I'm kind of thinking about is, shall we narrow this down a little? Has volunteered to take on a topic, and that's Pete, who volunteered form based code. What is it and why is it? What's it going to do for us? Um, but that leaves six other sections either to be collapsed or and assigned. So, where I say that, good question communications. And I think there's a select board thingy of all the select board Got stuff. It. Yeah. Yeah. Susan, logic. I, I, uh, it seems the to to me that uh, that the loose end here, which would be very difficult to to uh, to know a whole lot about, but it would be helpful if we had a sense of what we think the the select board what what are they going to be most interested in? Uh, my suspicion is that that what has transpired, the the history is going to be much less important than understanding what's in the document at this time. What are we actually proposing? That may be a completely erroneous assumption, but do we have any any guidance at all? Um, any sense from town staff about uh, what the the expected, high points would be for the, uh, the select board? You know, my thinking is that that's a really good question. And in addition to what my thinking is, you've got to give some in some way to let everybody's focus that they are, you know, sort of five people in the room plus us and people from the public come. Um, that that we invite some people to say, you know, come. So a little bit of introduction. I'm thinking, ask, listening to your question about their interest is that we should minimize that introductory just enough to let them um coming in and out i we we've gotten at least one uh that our internet connection is unstable so i don't know you can hear me now that's a good thing <laughs> yeah i hear some sentences i hear Three words and then no words. Yeah, and... I'm having that trouble as well. Okay. I just want to make sure my minutes are accurate. So you'll just have to fluff them up if, <laughs> if I miss anything. Okay. I, mean, I think Joe's got it. I put I think Joe put the nail on the head. Yeah. So and it's for direction because in the words of the Bill Belichick, you don't know what you don't know. Right. right. So I think important. Yeah. So a little on the history and then yeah primarily they're going to want to hear because they probably heard from some people little bits maybe positive maybe negative so this would be the chance there's what is in it um and then at the end the other important piece will be the process going forward because the yeah. most important um there's a lot of chance for the public to still get to know this understand it before the absolute final comes out. right so brief history what what has happened and then something what are the real issues to 
what are the takeaways to pay attention going forward? Um, and we kind of talked before about remarks to be no more than what, 35 minutes? I don't know. I mean, it depends on if <laughs> if if questions come, that's a good sign. That is a good sign. Right. Then the whole session can be back and with a little bit of stuff and then conversation. Because I think Mark, Mark, you kind of alluded to that, but the blackboard usually has a lot of questions. Right. Which is good because that's part of the, yeah. the you know, uh, format. Uh, that, that's very good. The other thing I'd add to this, so they hear about you had the developers' meetings, you had the attempt for the landowners' meetings, and things you've had for people to weigh in and, and give input so far. Yeah, stuff yeah. is important. To I, I feel I feel we can abbreviate it, but especially the comp plan. I mean, that's the comp plan is for for changing much of the code, right? And it's what the it's what. And if we ignore that, we ignore most of what our residents want. So, so that text I think so. for recovery. Yeah, I don't think I spend a lot of time in, on the comp plan itself. Yeah, uh, but just say this was something that the comp plan called for. This is how we're trying to mm -hmm. through it in that way without spending you know, a lot of the details of what's in the comp plan. Just think that would become over. Understand is here's the details of what we're going forward with. And, the issues that they're going to hear about from people. They will hear a little bit of specifics around the form based code piece. Um, I try to, there's a lot there. There is a lot. I think we're going to have to pair it. Yeah, well, yeah, but we'll see. I look at it every day and make changes. <laughs> Unfortunately, not cutting. Not cutting, right. <laughs> well, there's nothing like getting closer. To um, you know, clarify one's thinking. So the, the the first section, which is context and 2019 comp plan. I mean, this could be put on a slide. You know, it's it could be part of a. You know, like two and and I think. Um, is updating that slide presentation, mm -hmm. so there's. A lot of presentation, which she did for the select board, she's updating that. Oh. The the missing so that might serve us really well. And my guess is that she next Tuesday. She's just um, waiting for the use table, I think. Right, because there's one in on the use table. So that slide presentation really well that we could handle our remarks around our own notes, focusing the, the vision and the thought of the select board or two slides to sort of create that context around the complex. That's my hope. So let's keep scrolling. So that's the context and then so the implement, um, I, I think we can probably skip that. People think. I mean, it certainly was important to us, <laughs> but mm. to them. Um, yeah, I, I think any way, Susan, any way you can pare it down, any way you can pare it down would be a good you know, idea. Leave out any history that they could look up somewhere to learn the process and focus on the big piece that we're trying to educate them about, which is probably the recode, right? Yeah. So I'm, I'm just going to mark that either delete or. And it can be. Recode was launched. You know, because that's just it. I mean, that's so long. Ago. That's <laughs> um, anyone disagree? I have plenty of directions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Rico lost several planning directors. Um, so 
So that's my sense. And I'm not hearing any disagreement that we either eliminate or reduce dramatically both of those sections. So now from seven, we're down to five. Um, and that's... Okay, next section. What is character-based code, AKA form-based code, blah, 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 that's Pete. <laughs> Now, knowing Pete, <laughs> his presentation is going to be clear enough that there's not going to be a whole lot of questions, but it's going to set us up for looking at, I mean, we're not going to look at the code itself, but looking at the map is going to be interesting. I, I would think that that would be um you know, and even looking at some of the most recent changes that we're talking about. Have you had, as you've checked in on this daily, do you have any sense of, because I know when I, you know, do a presentation, I have a goal in mind in terms of, I want to be able to speak this in X number of minutes. And then sometimes I actually try that out aloud. <laughs> So do you have a sense of um, what this might run? I haven't gotten there yet. Okay. But, uh, and I would hope to, again, I hope there'd be a lot of interaction. I did have my yeah. wife read it and she, and she understood it. So, yeah, yeah. And it I just... haven't, haven't necessarily been keeping her appraised of all of what we've been doing, but yeah. she read it and she understood it. So that's a, yeah, it's very I'm good. trying to keep it simple. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's gonna be more than 10 minutes, I think. Right. So I'm just going to say 15 just for the hell heck of it. I, I would, that's a good guess at this point. Okay. Yeah, but I think it's the, I think it's important because I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what form-based code is and what, what it isn't. And, right. And how it how it does tie into the, to seven of the nine big ideas. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I think that's critical. Um, I see some nods. Yeah. Right. If, you know, if we don't, if we don't implement form-based code, it's like. Take the take the comp plan and throw it out. Yeah, yeah. There you go. There you go. <laughs> okay, keep scrolling. So yeah, then we see some of the plan. Lots of benefits. Are there benefits at all to the other code? I don't. I don't want to look like yeah, I'm yeah. trying to stack the deck. <laughs> now, I I don't know anything about code, mm, and yeah. thank you very much for doing this because now I know a little bit about. Oh. It. <laughs> but we're all saying the benefits of form based code. Yeah. What about the other uh, side? Well, one one size fits all. <laughs> I don't know. Way back to the traditional. I mean, what we've put together is a is a is a merging hybrid, and even more. I mean. Yeah, you. I mean, Euclidean code goes, you know, as I said, goes way back. Um, and I tried to, I tried to give the benefits of form-based code in 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 relation in relationship in relationship to the pure Euclidean code. Yeah, not a hybrid like we've put together. I mean, I think we could say one benefit for the pure Euclidean Euclidean yeah. might be more regard to private property rights. You know, because there's less you have to make your building look a particular way, where it's form based. You know, we have a hybrid, so it isn't quite as strict, but form based may insist that you have to, you have, we're saying you have to use certain substances, you can't use others, mm -hmm. or you're, and you have to, we want it to, you almost don't care if you're form based code. Um, you could have your form based batch plan. So as long as it looks like it's got retail on the bottom, three stories of um, residential on the top, you, behind the scenes, you could have a, you make an estimate. Um, so, so just I think that would be a strong point of doing the old Euclidean. This is a little more opportunity for a property to be creative. So on the other hand, there's more opportunity for create property to make a mess. <laughs> so. Yeah, and the, yeah. the other thing that I saw um, in your notes here is that Euclidean came about basically when planning, you know, both transportation stuff and land land code really focused on 
you know, vehicle vehicular transportation convenience, right? Exactly. Um, and it, it it wasn't about getting to the mall, but it was getting places like the the new freedom of the automobile was all exactly. you know, that that was the focus. And then we realized we've had the benefit now of seeing what that gives you. <laughs> and some of that we'd like to modify, right? We'd like to modify the the loss of town centers, the loss of walkable town centers. Um, and all of the concern about keeping the separating uses very carefully, we realized that we we went too far in that. You know, you don't need to separate all of the commercial from residential. Sometimes it's nice to have commercial right downstairs so you can get some, you know, milk and whatever. Um, so it's a, it's sort of coming back from an extreme in order to create the kind of vision that the comp plan spells out. I think those are the, okay. you want to, as a planner who knows about code, you want to weigh in at all? In I, terms of I mean, I don't, I don't really know how the traditional code is any better other than what Mark said that would be the only the property rights yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and the fact that we're only going to do this that we are only doing this proposing this for the town center growth area right it's very clear that it's not everywhere um, that it doesn't work everywhere and I see a Joe hand well I uh, this is going to be somewhat redundant because you you made the point but I, I think it's an important one that one of the, the my understanding of one of the primary goals of codes originally were to separate um, uses that were considered noxious, let's say, from yeah. uh, from uh, areas where people people lived. It might be industrial, it might be uh, a pig farm, you know, who knows? But um, the, 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 as you said, Susan, that took things too far. Uh, and it was we developed a, a series of monocultures, basically, that uh, that denied the potential for uh, for mixed use and for walkability and for the the character of of towns that uh, that draw people there because uh, it's because it's vibrant and it's an attractive place to be um and that that i think is i don't know how we make that point concisely but i think i think that's that's important and and i would also think that the the uh the fact that we're creating a hybrid where uh we're not suggesting that heavy industry be mixed in with uh you know, with mixed use, that it yeah. is, in fact, we've salvaged the best of Euclidean um, yeah. and uh, and introduced something which we feel uh, the community clearly wanted, as stated in the uh, uh, in the process. Yeah. Now, my memory is a little fuzzy, but I think in the presentation that Leslie created, she, she had a moment on form-based code and, you know, as a way to describe this is what traditional code does, you know, mm. it prioritizes uses and it, it form is separate, is, is secondary. Whereas what we are focused on is form and the public space and, and uses is separate, but it does get considered, it doesn't get lost. So hopefully that will come through clearly. And I think it's an important question not to look like we are not considering all of the options and being sensible, very sensible. <laughs> okay, so this is gonna be a nice chunk. Um, keep scrolling. I just wanted yeah. to know, yeah, this does say form-based code example number one, and it talks about Brunswick. Brunswick doesn't have form-based code downtown. I just want to share. Right. I think the benefits are really clear 
when we get into examples, I think we're um, what we're aiming for. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we have to be careful how we say it in terms of it, it isn't necessarily an example of form-based code, but it's it's the kind of walkable downtown that form-based code can help us to create. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in terms of, um, and I thought that the bringing up of Rusty's was genius. <laughs> mm. um, what a suggestion on, uh, in one of the, the items earlier, uh, top, Brunswick was mentioned, and yeah. I would suggest that uh, that we also uh, put Bath, which has uh, increasingly, a, a, I think, a good walkable downtown, and also uh, Damariscotta um, would, would be another, uh, Damariscotta Newcastle, uh, that core area uh, yeah. is also, uh, I think, viewed as being very desirable. Well, and I don't, you know, um, Auburn has actually adopted some form-based code for their downtown, mm -hmm. <laughs> because Auburn is, in a sense, the parallel situation. They are to Lewiston what we are to Brunswick. Mm -hmm. You know, there's never been any there there, but they're trying to create it. <laughs> and the river mm -hmm. often offers a big opportunity, and so they've actually gone into form-based code. But I think, to be honest with you, I think getting into examples, examples of what attracts people is, is positive. Bath, Brunswick, Dan Riscotta are very positive to mention because they're, they're the right size town to talk about in terms of population. But it, I don't. I think we have to be careful not to talk about that. These are examples of form-based code. They're what mm. form code will help to give us over our lifetimes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Scroll up a little bit there, Julie. Uh, okay. Yeah, I think that's that's fine. So it's, there's going to be obviously some tweaking of this. Um, I mean, I remember I remember the first time I heard a planning professional, and I won't give any names, look at the the first draft that Leslie gave us, and. I said, tell me what you think. I was like, we were struggling. We didn't know how to view it. And he said, it's brilliant. It will give us what the comp plan lays out. And so it's one of those things where, it, and now we've, you know, we've modified along the way. We've gotten a lot of feedback. Um, I, I think, we can pare down some of the form-based code section um, because what we want to do is help them have an understanding of what it is, why we're doing it, and then let us go on to a little bit about the process um, that the process we've gone through and then where we're going. Um, I think it will be important to them uh, to hear the different kinds of feedback um, that we've gotten um, and and when this new draft is coming out, which will be so well, much, if, if you don't if you want yeah. to prime the pump on questions or if you're not yeah. getting a lot of them, yeah. might be interesting because it would help describe the process as well as given enlighten people what's in the content is to talk about the drive throughs and how it changed through it. You know, this was kind of the initial vision or by the planners, this is the input we were getting back. Here's what was the result. And it shows that you were taking different opinions into account yeah. and came to a mm -hmm. some compromise. So yeah. To speak. yeah. And, and even on materials. Right. That type of thing. Yeah. You, know, you can have a couple of those things that if you need something to prime the pump, you can pull out. And uh, on the other hand, if all of a sudden 
if you start with a ton of questions, then you don't have to cover those, yeah. but they might be yeah. something that you could have just to. Good point. Well, um, the examples I, I chose, I wanted to, to give different, uh, like commercial, obviously, retail, commercial, yeah, and then municipal with the town, uh, the town complex, yeah, and then I, I chose Highland Green as a residential example, mm -hmm. and then uh, kind of the kind of the uh, uh, the uh, at getting them involved in the in the uh, Rusties there <laughs> there see if they can use the information I presented to to. Talk a little bit about Rusty's and is that is Rusty's an example of form-based code design and, and why or why not? Yeah. And that would be a good mm -hmm. discussion. Well, and another example that's right along Main Street mm -hmm. here is the credit union. Mm -hmm. Because the, the credit union was designed with in essence a faux front. Right. And because and it has this drive through and the way the drive through happens was modified so that um, car lights at night don't, you know, bother people in residential neighborhoods behind it. Um, you know, there, there was good and, and it was done, I believe. And I only know this because it was in what's his name's book. Oh, Aaron. Randall, yeah, Randall Arendt. That's right. That you know, it was an example of how the code was in the process of undergoing a change, but it had not come through and been finalized. And yet, because it was moving in a certain direction, the developer and the planning office worked together to move the, the project plan toward the new code. And that's a good, you know, it, it, because of the way the, I mean, the building is designed to fit in in a certain way. Um, so that's, a, you know, right within our area, within the growth area, town center. Um, and I'm, I'm a little leery about talking about Highland Green. Highland Green is purely residential. It's not mixed use in the sense that, I mean, there's a community center there, but it's otherwise, it's a residential planned community. It, it reflects very, um, what's the word, sensitive planning, but it's, is it, it's not form-based code as far as I know, is it? No. So I, I think, it, yeah. I, I think there's a risk in, uh, okay. in using Highland Green uh, it, it's um, there are certain assumptions made locally, I think, about Highland Green that aren't entirely accurate and aren't entirely positive. Um, we can we can eliminate that. And just I think it's it's great. I mean, we I, we talked about this in the workshop. Like my process is always to put everything in and then realize like what's. The, the necessary points and take out anything that seems less mm. than right okay. on target. So okay. that's, I think that's the process now is to take, we'll take know, that out. yeah, yeah. And I was, um, my point, Pete, wasn't to say you were, those weren't good examples. Mine was just to say, you might want to have a couple others in your back pocket that show the process or something okay. to bring out if needed. Good point. Thank you. Because the modifications in the, the based on feedback were, important okay and that would be that would be part of our the process section That's right. right don't we have a section for that well let's see so let's look at what's in the recode scroll down a little bit um no that so i think i think this next section one town two parts where 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 does process go? That's the question. Um, Maybe it was something that we talked about in the beginning that we don't have to give too much detail. Yeah, so scroll a little bit more uh, down, Julie, because I just want to see what, so the, okay, so what's ahead? So this part, this, this next to last section, um, scroll up just a little bit, that 
section talks about a lot of the input. It talks about a lot of the process. How we put out the word is what we've done over the past two years. And that's really the process. Um, you know, workshops, office hours, um, updates, article, and and so that's the place where we could put, yeah, examples of the drive-throughs, yeah, materials. Great, thank you. All right, we're getting to the point where we have to have some other volunteers. <laughs> she said. <laughs> now, some people are more comfortable presenting than others. I think it's time, you know, to have a few other folks come in. I'm happy to let Rick know that he's going to join me in making some of these remarks. And what I'm thinking is myself, Rick, and Pete need to be joined by one other person. And I'm wondering, um, I, I have actually put the word out to another one of our members who's not here, and I just I haven't heard back. Um, so we don't have to settle all of this today, but it would be nice to have a sense of what our roles are, I think, a little bit. We can hash it out more on the 16th. So what you're saying, Susan, is that you're anticipating uh, three, maximum of four people. Uh, am I correct? That's what I'm thinking. And and I think, you know, everybody on the committee who's able to come is, is expected to, you know, participate in the discussion. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we're all part of the process at different points along the way. And I would expect that, you know, as as one of us is presenting, someone else might chime in with an additional, you know, point to be made. Mm -hmm. um, or once questions start coming, you know, it's like what I might do is, you know, say, see who wants to feel that. Mm -hmm. um, I definitely want there to be nine talking heads <laughs> yeah i think that would uh that would make a, a a more dynamic presentation than uh than just having dedicated uh presenters and if we had more than three or four uh the, the coordination to make it look seamless i think becomes a real problem right so the yeah the the ad hoc or informal contributions I think can be every bit as important as uh, as the formal uh, presentation. Yeah. So I'm kind of wondering if Margaret might want to present one of these chunks. Depends on which chunk, I think. <laughs> yeah, you know, we have flexibility. Okay. Um, do any of the chunks appeal to you? Um, I think when I was looking through this, um, the last two were probably, um, I probably would feel more comfortable with, you know, yeah. the, the parts that I have had more visibility to. Yeah. So some of this, how we put out the word, I mean, it, mm -hmm. it's, it's, the, it's the process, right? Mm -hmm. It's the process we've gone through. And then, um, and how the process has shaped the result. Um, mm -hmm. Go down to the last section, Julie. Okay. Um, yeah. And I mean, you know, Questions along the way will show that we're doing a good job. Mm -hmm. 
part of what I wonder is what are we going to give them ahead of time? They all the select board always wants material ahead of time, but it's not it's not a meeting. So it's not like it's it's not like an, our update where the update they usually get the update ahead of time and they can you know think about questions and whatever. But um yeah. it's a workshop. Yeah. Probably isn't gonna be the case, but if that draft of the code is ready, we could give them the link to that ahead of time they could start looking mm -hmm. at it. Or at least the tops and center portion. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's a good point. I mean, I think they're used to having something before. I think a major, a major presentation like this, I think it would be helpful. Yeah. And then they could even prepare, they, they could even prepare questions right. just by reading. Yeah. You know, just just um, summary of the slides. Yeah. Right. And we could even give them a link to the slides. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah, we could. Hey, why not? I think I was it was spotty uh, in the beginning of the meeting for me when I was traveling, so I didn't quite hear. Are we using are we reusing the slides that were um, presented by Leslie? Leslie, um, she is going to update that slide presentation, mm -hmm. and there's one thing that she doesn't have yet: the uh, planning board. Um, and Julie are going to meet on Thursday to go through um, the use table. And that's one final piece that will fall into place. But she works pretty quickly. So once that is done, um, you know, I think it will be available for our meeting on the 16th, our workshop. Awesome. So I'm hearing process for Margaret. Yeah, that sounds good. Okay. Hot dog. So maybe we've gone as far as we need to go today. Any other thoughts or um, questions, worries? I think as far as the mechanics, because there's four of us, it'd be helpful just to use one computer Instead of four different computers. Yeah. I, yeah. I I work off an iPad and I don't use what you use. So it would be advan advantageous to me to maybe work off yours or whether, sure. whether we each work the computer ourselves or whether one person works. I mean, those yeah. kind of things we can talk yeah. about later, but we can the make mechanics it. of the presentation. Yeah. Is yeah. what I'm, is what I'm getting to. Yeah. Because we do want it to be seamless. So. As much as possible. As much as possible. <laughs> so why don't we focus on that for the 16th and Joe's hand. Jump right in, Joe. Um, just a uh, quick thought on uh, the fact that we uh, have the advantage of being able to have things up on screen while we're talking. I think yeah. we ought to uh, make sure that there's always something up there of interest and in in. <laughs> In the profession, there was uh, a term used that isn't exactly, uh, it's a little cynical, it was called eyewash. Uh, and that uh, I'm, I'm thinking of some of the uh, images that were created uh, by the, uh, the planning team during our those intense, intensive sessions in the beginning with the, basically the, the vision uh, of things so that if we don't have text or uh, or specific examples on the screen that maybe we have something that it just looks so darn good that everybody wants it. <laughs> well, and I think I think Leslie's slide presentation, yeah. which I don't know if that's PowerPoint, I don't know what she's used, but um, I have a feeling that she has created some good visuals, mm -hmm. um, not all of which are, you know, text and presentation prompting. They're just, they're, they're visuals to bask in. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. you're, you're right there uh, in terms of having something on the screen at all times. And, you know, people, we can refer back to earlier slides if people want. Mm -hmm. 
And I, you know, I don't know if we'll be able to edit her presentation to add more pieces in, but um, I, it, my recollection was that it was fairly meaty. Um, and if it works so that there's a real back and forth and some questions happening during it, and we encourage that, I think that, you know, that can be sort of the, the format. And then we can work on our, our mechanics together on the 16th. How, how long was how long was the presentation? Or is the presentation? I forget, eight minutes? Uh no, it's well, it's because there, that was her recording. She did a recording. Oh. And she also did a slide presentation that she talked through. She was present at the select board workshop. There was a, a first select board workshop. Okay. Were you there for that? I know Joe was there for that. Andy was there. Mm. Um, Margaret, you were there. It's not ringing a bell. Yeah, I bet you were. I bet you came on after that. Yeah, it's not ringing a bell. Um, and it was it was a very memorable event. <laughs> um, but mm. Leslie was, you know, she, Leslie zoomed in and she talked through her slide presentation. So it wasn't a recording. You know, her recording was 12 minutes. Oh, okay. Yeah. And m my sense is that, you know, it could be strung out a little bit depending on how we want to speak to it. We could pause on the slide and, and go further. Um, but my hope is that we have her presentation a couple days before the workshop. We can look at it together and see how much we're guided by that. Okay. So the only disadvantage to using if she hasn't changed it too much is there will be three people that have theoretically at least seen it and absorbed it before. So then they, like, what's new? My guess is that they didn't absorb a lot. <laughs> I hate to say it, but I don't think that there was a lot of absorbing going on. I think probably like Matt did. Yes. Roland did. Yeah. So they might be like, have we seen this before? So yeah. You might well, what kind of a different twist? Yeah, those are the those are the two people who would have seen it, but I think the way in which information will be presented <laughs> will enrich because we're going to be presenting it. Leslie's not going to be presenting. Well, the stuff you talking right? about, I yeah. definitely agree. It sounds yeah. good. It'll be different. Yeah. I just you may hurt your presentation by using the same slideshow as before because it uh -huh. might be harder to really get something. In. Yeah, we'll see. But we'll see what she ends up doing. Um, I mean, she did offer to update it, so I'm sure there's new stuff in there. Um, and you do have new select board members who haven't seen it at so, all. Yeah, two new people. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So we've got 10 minutes before we lose Joe. Let's get rid of this thing. Okay. <laughs> um, and let's go back up to, um, you know, the, the, we, we have an agenda item of the workshop on the 19th. I think most of us were there for that. We just, we really focused on the red line, um, which th there were only, a, there was only one real question that came up on that red line. Um, and it had to do with um, a section on exclusions and the fact that a, a deck or porch or something could be within a foot of the property line. And we discussed that this morning in sort of a closeout session um, for Julie with the consultants. And that was agreed that we would eliminate that. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that piece is unnecessary and um, it's gone. <laughs> so um, yeah, the, the workshop with, um, um, coming up the, the stakeholder workshop is happening tomorrow. 1.30? 2.30. 2.30. Thank you. Two kind of 2.30 to four-ish. Mm -hmm. It'll be right here in this room. We, it, we didn't do an RSVP, so we don't know who's coming. Um, I hope someone. <laughs> <laughs> We'll see. Um, and then code cleanup. Code cleanup. Um, we did have a workshop. The planning board had a workshop at their last meeting. It was the 28th of March. 
um, to look at conditional use and the use table, as well as moving the performance standards in the zoning ordinance over to the site plan ordinance. Um, and there wasn't too much discussion. There wasn't a lot of opportunity, I guess, for the board to review the material beforehand. So we're going to be looking at it again um, this Thursday. And hopefully we'll get some resolution around those items and get that stuff off to Kirk on Friday. And what I learned this morning is that um, all of the stuff that's been going on, Julie has communicated that really thoroughly and carefully with the consultants. So they're they're up to date. Kirk is up to date with with what's going on, and um, you know they they stand ready to to revise, do the final revisions in this draft. The the thing that we also spent a few minutes on this morning was, um, and I wasn't sure really how to ask this question, but it's it's the question of stitching the recode piece together with the cleanup update piece. And it turns out that that's, that really is a big deal um, in terms of providing us with one draft. The, the, the code itself is not a big issue. It's the map that is more complicated than I realized, partly because of the GIS overlays on the current map. So we're looking at a way to see whether or not it's possible without a lot of time to, we've, we've got the current zoning map, Topsom's current zoning map. Then we've got the town center growth area recode, form-based code piece. We've got that map. How does that fit onto so we're, we're looking at creating um, a black outline, magic marker as it were, um, around that boundary so that people can sort of see where that is. Um, when, we're, we're not sure if it's worth doing that, if, if it's doable in a reasonable amount of time. Um, the process of actually doing that new map is going to happen with the help of a Bowdoin intern who's coming in, I guess, at the start of June and going to work with Sky. Um, mm -hmm. Sky knows GIS. The student knows GIS, but it's a different kind of GIS than Justin knows. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. And so all of the GIS experts are going to work together. And it sounded like um, a reasonable um, time frame to expect that whole process to be concluded by the middle of July, but it's not possible to have a map of the new code that we're going to present for town meeting. So the question was, oh, so in our in our rollout of the public process, at town meeting, how can we give people as a visual? And so that's the that's the real question mark right now is is it possible to do something in a in a brief time? So we'll see. We, we won't know that. I think for I don't know what. I think we'll Probably know tomorrow. Because Justin will be back tomorrow. We can ask Justin if he can make that outline. Oh great. Okay. I think the answer is going to be yes. Okay. That would be great. Okay. Any thoughts or questions as you listen to me describe what we want to do at the town meeting? Um, and then, you know, later we'll have this great product, which we can roll out in the fall. We can post it, we can put it on the town website, the map and the new code. Um, we can do, you know, different kinds of outreach, letting people know that it's there and it's available. And then we can start planning 
open houses in the fall? If, if we don't have a, a map uh, for the rollout that's 100% accurate, uh, I mean, it, it can be, I don't see anything wrong with saying it's a work in progress and that the, uh, that the absolute final uh, boundaries have been have been implemented. Yet, uh, aren't we more interested in the uh, in the concept of what's what we're all together trying to achieve? And by that, I mean the planning board with the cleanup of of the existing code and the work that we've been doing with the form based code. Um, I mean. It, it, it's not going to be voted on for another year from the town town meetings. It seems to me to be perfectly reasonable. Uh, you know, if we show them a, a plan with the top some cent, uh, center code as we understand it at that at this time, uh, there there will there is the potential that that may change a little bit just based on feedback that we get. Good point, Joe. Yeah. And I think that was where the conversation ended with Leslie and Kirk and things too, was the thought was we can outline, because the issue is the real official zoning map has all these overlays and complex things that layers have to put on. But if we take the current real official fancy map, then just put an outline of where the tops and center zones are going to be different. A, people can see what part's changing and get comfortable that the rest of the zones are not changing at all. Mm -hmm. um, and then we can call their attention to see the insert, which is basically what Matt Leslie did, um, that shows the new zones and stuff. Uh, and then, as you said, Joe, then things can get fine-tuned as the summer goes on to make the new um, fancy map with all the layers. But for the purposes of the discussion, if Justin can do that, outline we need for the just to create the insert then we should be able to do exactly what you said mm. how's that sound good okie dokie now i'm assuming that we have no liaison check-in today mm. come through a power outage we are down to basics. Recode. Yeah. The uh, the Topsom uh, Community Center Committee is is not meeting uh, this this month. They've got uh, a series of uh, tours that they're going to be doing of other community centers. Um, That's great. And their their work continues, but they're just not having a formal meeting. And I the last one I missed because um, I had uh, the cold. Um, so I, I do have their notes from that and I was going to present at the last of our, uh, of our meetings, but we ran out of time and there right. wasn't anything, uh, anything critical. It was more informational. Well, my hope, let's think, um, that I'm hoping that at our May meeting, we could have maybe that update from you sure, and also an update from, um, Angela. Um, because I know she's had that um, in her mind. Mm -hmm. Which okay. committee? Which committee is Angela on? Um, the Topsom Conservation Commission. Okay. It's not been before them yet, though, and they are not having a regular meeting this month. No. <laughs> they were supposed to have it today. They canceled because of the eclipse. Because of the eclipse. Right. Great. Okay. <laughs> when should we cancel our meeting? That's what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Food for thought, folks. When we're done. Yeah, when we're done. No, we, we have to this is a this is a, a marathon. This is not a sprint. So we get <laughs> to rest. Um and I've already wondered, like, should we what are we thinking about sort of July and August, at least one of those months, we shouldn't meet. Um, we should take a little break. I know that there's a, a chance of losing momentum. We know how to regroup and, and regain momentum. Um, and I, I don't know, we've, we've put in a lot of 
effort here. All of the town committees and boards rest <laughs> time to time. <laughs> <laughs> and we should do. Okay. Uh, Susan, I I need to sign off. I apologize, but yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for your input, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Bye, Joe. Bye, bye. And I'm I'm ready to um accept a motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion. To See adjourn. you all on the 16th. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Hot dog. <laughs>